Well, thank you for that introduction. We'll see about the no deaths part. I'm, uh, I'm not entirely sure about that, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, so yeah, I'm Sorix, and next to me I have... Eris, hello. Um, yeah, let's just get right into it. We're starting on the first mission, Cairo Station. We're skipping the armory. Uh, it's just a tutorial level. Uh, and in sort of P, uh, PB attempts, world record attempts, you might see people skipping this first section. I'm not going to do that because it's not really marathon safe. Uh, it uh, relies on... Uh, oh, right. Yes. <laughs> We're underway. Let's go. Valid <laughs> run. It's, it's okay. Um, uh, we, we, we just did that skip that I was talking about, actually. Um, so yeah, there's going to be some enemies coming out here. I'm going to be milling to delay a checkpoint a little bit. So just in case I die, uh, the revert is a bit smaller. So legendary, if you never played Halo, this difficulty is very brutal. Uh, there's probably going to be quite a few deaths here and there. Uh, but we're, sometimes it's worth taking risks, worth dying a little bit, reverting a couple times, overtaking slower, safer routes. So I'm grab the plasma pistol here. Uh, and BR, new combo, one of the strongest uh, 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 weapon uh, couples in the game. Overcharge from the plasma pistol, BR headshot, can kill any elites very quickly. And there's going to be a lot of elites in this combat section here. So, Sorix is not doing anything particular at the moment, except just trying to kill everyone as fast as possible as they respawn right in front of him. Uh, but obviously he's playing on Legendary, which makes it ever so slightly harder. Actually, very much harder, but... So, Lasha Wave should be coming in here, nice. Uh, not the fastest fight, but we didn't die, so that's the important bit. And now I'm going to be committing some war crimes here, and uh, didn't actually do anything. I was hoping for a nade there. Uh, sometimes they drop frags, which can be helpful in the next section. I actually have to look at this explosion in the background, or it'll I'll lose time, because Bungie wanted you to look at the spot, look at the, the pretty explosion they made. Okay, that was really scary, actually. I'm going to wait here a second for shields. Hopefully I get a checkpoint. All right, nice. So, really want a checkpoint in this part, otherwise if I die it's like a two minute revert. So another combat section here, have to clear this out for a door to open. Another wave fight, gonna be making good use of the new combo here hopefully. And one thing I'm doing in these combat sections a lot is sort of um, switching, tapping the switch button, uh, switch weapon button twice whenever I switch weapon to speed up the animation slightly. This makes the combat a little more efficient sometimes. And there should be just one more elite hiding behind this box. Yep. And now we get the sword. So the sword is going to be sort of the main component of the speedrun in terms of speed tech. Uh, a lot of you are probably familiar with sword flying. It's like a classic Halo 2 glitch. A lot of people know it from back in the day probably. Uh, there's also sword cancelling, which is kind of a variation of it, but also kind of different. You're gonna see it in a second here. I'm just gonna play it safe here. Get a checkpoint for this section. And there's a sword cancel. So the sword has a mechanic called a lunge, where if you're close enough to an enemy and you're aiming at them, vertical turns red and you can lunge towards them. But the game actually lets you cancel that lunge. Uh, I'm gonna put safe here. Hopefully don't die. It's a bit sketchy. Alright, we're up. Hopefully we get another checkpoint here. So you cancel the lunge and you jump as well. Nice checkpoint. And lets you... Uh, traverse sort of more distance than you were gonna. So there's the first death. It was coming. This is actually one of the, I would say probably the second hardest level in the game. Um, next to Grave Mind, which we'll be seeing later in the uh, in the run, much later. Sort of the late game run killer. 
And this is the reset hell level. So hopefully we'll be seeing another more flashy sword fly here, which I'll explain how it works in a second. So once again, we're abusing the sword launch. There we go. Nice. So that's a frame perfect trick where I'm using the red reticle of my main weapon, uh, in this case a battle rifle, which has a much longer range than the energy sword. And I'm doing a weapon switch and then cancelling that weapon switch with a reload input. And if you do it frame perfectly, the red reticle um, stays from your previous weapon. And you'll be able to sword launch from basically uh, any distance that you can get a red reticle from. So the longer range weapon, the further you can sword fly. So here's another sword fly, which is kind of a special one. I actually picked up a plasma pistol uh, in the middle of the sword fly, so now I don't have a sword anymore. But it's okay, because it's the last uh, room of the level. And there's going to be a, sh a bunch of elites here, so... Noob combo is extremely important to be able to do this quickly and safely. And there we go, that's Cairo. Nice. That was actually pretty good. So one thing to mention is as well as is a lot of the enemy enemies you get in this game are random, which sort of rank they are. So there's different ranks of elites. There's blue elites, red elites, white elites, uh, highest rank. Same with grunts, jackals. Uh, it's usually random what you get. Sometimes the, they have random weapons as well. So in that room, I got some dual wielding elites, which is sort of bad RNG, but it's gonna happen. Regardless, just because there's so many elites, but they can really melt you if you have the dual plasma rifle elite. Kill you in like half a second. They're up close, so it's really scary getting one of those dual wielders sometimes. Uh, here we're just going over the top of the map. This is like a 20 minute time save or something. Kind of intended. There's like Easter eggs up here, so Bungie knew you could get up here. Um, didn't do anything about it. There's a lot of that in this game. Um, going out of bounds and there's just not a lot of barriers and things preventing you from going out of bounds. Under you just letting you explore, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, some of that is lost in the later games. But this game, you're, you're pretty free to go where you want to. There's a pretty nice sword cancel. And I've been playing on controller until now. I'm going to switch to mouse and keyboard. Because some of the limitations that are there uh, when driving with controller aren't there with mouse and keyboard. So it's a bit more comfortable driving mouse and keyboard. It's also, so in some cases, it's also faster. Hopefully we don't get sniped here. Worth mentioning that driving in Halo is not the greatest mechanic. <laughs> I actually have good shields here, so I'm going to go for a bit of a risky route. Never punished. Nice. Normally you'd go around there. Just had good shields, so. And yeah, there are some sniper jackals here. We got did got a bit lucky. Oh, oh. might still get shot. Okay, <laughs> messed up the driving a little bit there. That was sketchy because there was a sniper jackal right on top of me. Which, if you don't know, they one shot you on legendary. It's very unfair. And they and don't miss. Yeah, the, uh, very. Well, hopefully they'll miss in the next mission. I'm I'm counting on yeah. it. Well, we'll probably see some sniper jackal deaths in the next yeah, mission. So yeah, this is... Uh, we're just going to be driving through this tunnel now with the Warthog. I picked up the Warthog instead of the Ghost because it drives a little faster, but also the main reason is it's way safer on Legendary. You have the Marine tanking da damage and just going faster also helps prevent damage. And Warthog is just tankier than the Ghost in general, so... Yeah, the enemies will target the Marine on the machine gun instead of you. Exactly, yeah. So if you have any donations, now is a good time, because I'm just going to be driving through the tunnel for like next minute and a half or so. Oh, indeed we do, and I love to see the support from the Halo Runs community coming in. So like, whenever you have time, just, just send it over to me. I also want to say that I'm very familiar with those Jackals. Very, very <laughs> familiar with those Jackals myself. 
All right, let's start it off with Sparks here. fifty dollars uh, with a donation that I already read, so you're gonna, you're gonna get double here. I have Bachan here with twenty dollars that says hi, Sorix. I also have username Niels here with sixty-five dollars that says donating for the bonus run Amnesia Debunker. Yes. If you ask me, amnesia and not remembering, that sounds awful. And this de-stressing, if you had to experience it, someone should do something about that. Yeah, yeah, we want to actually experience the amnesia. Thank you so much for that donation as well, username Neil Swift. And Ace with $24 says, come on people, let's see some spool. Also going towards the amnesia debunker incentive. That is creeping ever so closer. We have passed the $800 mark. We are less than $200 away from meeting that. We have to meet it before the end of this run, everyone. If you donate, keep putting them towards that incentive. Let's get that mat before we actually get to the Arbiter. How is that, how's that possible? Also, Wilson Watson here with fifty dollars says, "Good luck on the run today, Sorix." Did someone slash, say slash hey, or hashtag HaloRuns.com? Yo, thank you, Wilson. Yeah, there we go. That is the Halo Halo Runs community just coming into force here. I have plenty more, so whenever you're ready for it. Yeah, yeah. We're just about to end this mission, uh, getting into Metropolis. This is a sketchy level. Well, it might be. We'll see how it goes. There's two sections in particular where we're really hoping not to get. Uh, Screwed by some sniper jackals. Starting out, I'm gonna be trying to grab a rocket launcher from this marine. It can be okay. That can be like really hard to do sometimes, for no reason. <laughs> but uh, this is kind of like a new thing. Some people are doing. I'm a fan of it myself. Uh, most people will normally grab the marines here. I'm gonna be skipping the marines uh, and so saving some time. But I'm also gonna be losing some time because I'm gonna be using the rockets to some enemies so it's a trade-off but I think it's safer some people uh, I don't know some people like this strat some people don't but it's kind of a new thing people are doing but yeah more driving in a straight line so Hell yeah feel free are you ready for a singing donation uh, I don't know <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, go, there's twenty dollars on the line, so I have to do it. I have Marty O'Don here. Composed my alarm oh, with ten dollars. That that has the the lyrics of the song here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna apologize in advance. This is also a trade-off. It's more money for charity, and your ears may be bleeding. But here we go. Sounds fair. It's it's the Halo theme song. So if you know the song, hymn it along. I'll go start right now. Oh. Thank you so much, everyone, and thank you for that donation. And I expect that extra $20 from you, Marty. Let's go. Shout out to Hark, by the way, for that. <laughs> if you know, you know. So there's the rocket shot. I don't think I killed the sniper, but I'm pretty sure he oh. dodged away. So it should be safe regardless. Yep, there we go. So it took two tries, but if I'm going to be honest, that was me. I'll take the blame on that one. Sniper jackals were okay. So this section, we're coming up on the scarab here. I have to be a bit careful because there's a way to soft lock here. Um, so we just won't go too fast because if you go too fast, you can soft lock. Taking it slow and steady, basically. Gonna wait for hopefully a checkpoint here because this section mm. can be terrible. Sometimes it takes a while. Yeah. There you, go. there you go. Yeah, so unlike the previous rounds, Sorix can't actually quick save whenever he wants. It's kind of at the mercy of the game. Yeah. Number of Marines trapped in that so building. He can manipulate it a little bit, but the the yeah, threat. not by much. I messed that up a little bit, but we didn't get snipe yet. Yet. Yeah, we, there is still a chance. It, I think we're okay. It took a lot longer, so I was trying. Oh! oh. Calling it too early. Calling it too early. There are a number of marines All right, here we go again. Oh, what is that rate doing? Uh, I think that's just a reaver. Yeah. We actually need the rate to die in the right spot. If he dies too far up, you actually get uh, a third wraith as reinforcements. There are a 
are a number of marines trapped in that building tree. Uh, that's number three. Yeah, this it's is legendary. Yeah, yeah. this is a re definitely like a really big run, kill run killer. Some sometimes you see world record attempts. People don't even go for this checkpoint, which is just ridiculous. All right, there we go. Got the nade board as well, which is what I was trying to earlier. You throw a nade and board at the same time. You can basically clip the nade inside. Okay, I think we're good. There's still one more chance to get sniped, but I think he just died, so we should be all right. So this phantom's coming in. Mouse and keyboard really helps here, actually. Uh, being able to just look up and around instantly on controller, you get a lot of uh, slow, Sir, slow hey, aiming there. Nice they can't really do anything about killing that marine for rocket ammo. And I'm just gonna wait here like two seconds just to be extra, extra safe. I'm pretty sure I'm alright, but just not get the soft lock. I'm gonna give this marine my rockets, and he's gonna reload them for me. And that actually didn't use any ammo, so he just. They like, like magically gave me two two rockets right there, which is pretty cool. That's in like, uh, I think at least three Halo games. That that glitch, where you can get like infinite ammo like that, is like in a lot of them. Need an audio key here, by the way. All right, and we're on the scarab early. So we did a nade jump there, throwing a nade uh, under us using the explosion as a boost. Nice checkpoint. Gonna stand at the front of the scarab here, otherwise you get a slight delay. And we're here, we're on the scarab way earlier than you meant to. You're meant to board this from like the bridge below. So we're here right before the enemy spawn. I was hoping to get a plasma pistol from that ground, but I'll take a nade. All right. All in all, that could have gone a lot worse. I'll take that. And we're on to Arbiter. Which so this characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the first mission as the Arbiter. The um, people, I, I think people went crazy back we in the day when you like Arbiter. play through the first three we missions and then you, oh my God, I'm playing as an as an elite. This is crazy. Uh, but yeah, this plays into the story of the game. You're kind of going back and forth between Master Chief and this elite called the Arbiter, which is sort of... We're on like the opposite side right now, but as the game goes on, uh, we're going to get betrayed uh, and switch sides, going up with the humans. That tried to go for a sword cancel there. Missed up the timing a little bit. Hopefully we'll still be alright. And these mind chases here. So the important difference between Arbiter and the Chief is the Arbiter has this cloaking ability instead of the flashlight. Slightly more useful. <laughs> uh, but it's basically a cycle where every, uh, I think it's about 10 or 15 seconds or so, we get a cloaking and it's extremely useful for sneaking past enemies and yeah, doing sword tricks as well because one of the things I haven't mentioned about sword um, answers and flies is the way the enemy moves as you're doing them. I should cancel, by the way. It's very important. If the enemy's moving, uh, you can get what's called a meter stop, or you go for it, and you just stop right above the enemy and don't get anything, and it's just very sad most of the time. Sometimes you want it, actually. But using camo to sort of change how the enemies uh, alert can help with that response. A little bit of a fight here. We have to clear these enemies out to open the next door to the next area. Getting some work runs here. And got a bit unlucky actually. Wanted some on this side. Uh, but we'll go with the carbine. I kind of wanted some fewer ammo for this next section, but we should be okay. So, gonna be using. Good use of making good use of the camo here, and now I'm gonna stick my head in a box because if the enemies can't see me, or if I can't see the enemies, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> they, yeah, yeah, I got that one a little backwards. Yeah, if uh, I can't see them, they can't see me. Yeah, 
basically they the check for enemies check for your head head box so if your head is in a wall they can't see Stick your head in the sand yeah hide from everything wow. might get a sketchy i think we got a checkpoint though so if something goes wrong be all right all right that's the part i wanted a fewer for but the enemies were pretty nice get camo up just in time for this cancel nice and uh, we're actually coming up on the end of the level a lot of the mi missions in this game are pretty short there's like a few really long missions and a f uh, like a bunch of really short levels you could do a skip where you clip to this gas glass but it's a bit risky i'm kind of bad at it <laughs> so we're gonna take the 10 second time loss and i'm gonna be trying to do uh Awesome keyboard specific trick here. Called slinky flicking. Flipping? Uh, I saw something there that was. Uh, it saved time. It was decent. You can fly the banshee quicker by doing flips and cancelling them by turning in a specific way. Oh. <laughs> Alright. Uh, yeah, it's not a bad arbiter. And I'm gonna be using awesome keyboard for the first half of this level as well. Because there's, there's not gonna be a lot of sword tricks. Haven't really mentioned it yet, but a lot of one of the or the main thing I like controller for is the sword, sword flies and sword cancels. I'm just really used to doing it on controller because I played this game or I speed run this game before it even came out on PC. So I'm just used to doing those frame perfect inputs on controller. Need an audio key here? Yeah. Not sure if this timing was right, but we'll see in a second. This is a dialogue skip, hopefully. Might have worked. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, okay, we got it. So the dialogues are overlapped. Saves like 10 seconds. Um, you need to de despawn or deload the room in a like, sp very specific time, and that overlaps the dialogues. And you can see why mouse and keyboard is helpful here. There should be one more wave. Nice. And now we're good. That was actually a pretty good first room. And this is one of the big auto scholars in the run. Sorry about that. <laughs> I like to tab out here. See if you hold W. Basically, I'm putting my head in this wall and uh, I'm gonna go out in a second. I'm just gonna clear some enemies so it's not as boring. But we're gonna be on this elevator for uh, three and a half minutes or so. And there's a death plane below us. You can actually. I'm gonna look at it in a second. But you can actually see where we're supposed to go. It's right down there. Uh, but there's a death plane below the elevator, and it sort of descends like slowly under the elevator, like slightly below. So it seems like you might be able to drop down there, but uh, you have to wait sort of like until the elevator's halfway down, and then the death plane is low enough where we don't die. So yeah, we just have to wait here. Perfect time for donations. I have plenty. I was waiting for you on that. I have $20 here with Sleek that says, Best of luck, Sorks. Halo Runs is proud of you. Make sure not to fall into the sea. <laughs> I love the references. I love this. It's so good. Thank you, Sleek. I have Alice, new guy here with 10 all says, Good luck, Sorks. People cheers. Hashtag Halo Runs, another supporter of the Halo Runs community. There's so Thank much you, Halo community fan, like fans out there. It's great. Okay. I love to see the support here. Coming to ESA, I have Lurvin with seven dollars. Says hello, Sorix and Eris. Hope you had a good event so far. This donation is here to pressure Sorix and this thing to commentate my Dishonored run. You have to now. I guess I have to check yeah. out the Dishonored run on. I think it's Monday. I'll check for you real quick. I think it's Monday. In the meantime, I have another donation. Seclusive here with seven dollars and twenty-seven cents. It says, "Ayo, happy birthday, Sorix. Good luck on the run, brother." Is it your birthday? Is it? Uh, no. Oh. 
But you, couldn't you just pretend and have more donations come in for your so birthday? Uh, like, I, okay, maybe. I, I have a reputation might, of singing is, happy birthday you know, on stream. Like, mm, uh, yeah. Thank you, Seclusive. <laughs> I have more donations here. I have LGB eating with $50. It says, oh. hey, oh, good luck, Slorix. Nice run so far. Hashtag Halo runs. All of them are going towards the Amnesia, the bunker incentive. We are less than $100 away. We have our own e Benny in the audience sweating like crazy because he knows it's coming. <laughs> Come on, everyone. We can do it. We can do it at the end of this mission. Let's go. This is a long one, so you got plenty of time. Then I'll keep on rolling. I have Not The Real Marty with $30 that says, and an extra 10 for the embarrassment felt by everyone who joined in. I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize. I still wait. I'm still waiting for $20 from The Real Marty. And also, we got $10 from the audience participation. So you should be proud of yourself, audience. You did great. Thank you so much, everyone. There you go. Yeah, applause for yourself. Like, joining in on the fun here. Is, is like, is, it, that's what we're all here for. Like, the on-site experience is amazing. There's so much going on. Keep a tab on our socials as well, because we are sharing everything that we can. We have tournaments going on. We have an arcade downstairs. There is a lot going on at ESA. And we have two streams, of which the second one is starting tomorrow as well. So you have double the enjoyment. Back to you. All right, well, we're perfect timing, because we're just off the elevator. And this is a very intense combat section coming up here. Why don't we try to focus on this? Trying to kill the enemies in a, in a specific order uh, to avoid extra spawns. Because Bungie loves giving you reinforcements. And you killed enough enemies. So, should be another core flood here. This is getting sketchy. Got a camo here. There's some shields back. So that should be the last one. 36. I'm looking at the timer actually, because as when I kill that last flood, it's gonna start a one-minute timer. Yep, started. You can tell because we're getting extra spawns on that side now. Huh? Um. And it's gonna start a one minute timer, and it's basically just infinite flood for this one minute timer. So we could be killing flood right now, killing enemies, but there's no point, because they're just gonna keep infinitely spawning during that one minute. So what we're gonna do instead is we're gonna save up four flood, because there won't be any more than four flood at one point. So we're just gonna wait uh, until the minute is over, and then kill all four at once. And I'll show off. It's actually a secret skull over here. A little Easter egg. And Minute is almost up here. Just looking at the in game timer. In game timer is a very nice feature to have as speedrunners, by the way. We use it a lot for, um, for IL specifically. Really nice feature to just have in the game, by the way. And it gets a lot of people into speedrunning too. What was that? Gets a lot of people into speedrunning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's actually like achievements in MCC um, for for like speedrunning the levels or getting certain times, which gets a lot of people into speedrunning. It's a really fun way to get into it. And uh, when they launched MCC, they actually like flew out speedrunners and uh, they named those achievements after like gold record holders at the time. That's pretty cool. And then they proceeded to patch all the glitches back in. Because <laughs> no one was actually speedrunning on MCC. That's true, yeah. yeah. So. Uh, it was a f quite a few years ago now, but in the past, uh, this version of Halo 2 didn't have any of the sword glitches. Uh, so everyone still ran on the original version of the game, on Xbox, or Dawn Patch, or... Um, Backwards compatible, or all people ran on Xbox 360. But they patched, actually patched four, four speedrunners specifically, patched back the sword tricks in the game uh, for campaign only, so you couldn't abuse it in multiplayer. Um, and yeah, that really revived the game. And now it's the, for most people, it's the preferred version to speedrun over the original game. There, uh, it's, it's, there's quite a few differences between uh, Anniversary and Original. Um, 
mainly physics are a little different. That cable launch is pretty cool, by the way. Unfortunately, it doesn't save time because I have to wait for the dialogue before this one's vulnerable, which is quite sad. Floor. That was sketchy. I don't know what was going on. But yeah, one thing I didn't men I forgot to mention is that elevator launch we did. We uh, activated the elevator and then reactivated it to make it crush us, which plus what we call a pressure launch. Or, uh, basically pressure into the game launching you. Uh, didn't see what the timer was. Well, we didn't soft lock at least, but I went way too early. So, <laughs> the timing here was very important. I kind of went early because I wasn't paying attention. But the uh, the station that we're on, actually, like, the the cable holding it, because we're on, like, a gas giant. And there's, like, a giant cable holding up the station. We actually cut the cable, and now we're, like, in free fall. So the gravity gets all messed up. Uh... And depending on how, on when you drop there, after you do the elevator skip, it changes the gravity you get. Uh, it's a bit complicated and weird, but it works. No. I'm trying to kill a flood here so I get spawns in this next room. Uh, okay. One of those sentinels to spawn in, so I could go for that floor fly. And um, one more thing to mention about that elevator launch is we're invincible. <laughs> actually can't die right now. Um, so when you, normally when you go up the elevator, it's actually an intended feature that the game makes you invincible, but just for the duration of the elevator. Because otherwise, they, I guess they had some issues in playtesting where people are dying on the elevator from like falling and stuff. So they made you invincible temporarily, but when we do that elevator, uh, launch. We, we still get the invincibility flag, but the game is never able to take it away. So we just stay invincible for the rest of the mission. Uh, it's not for the rest of the game or anything, it's just the rest of this. Which makes this, this end section kind of cozy, kind of comfy. It's nice. Little stroll. Yeah. This is the first boss fight, so Halo 2 has a lot of, well, three boss fights. This, uh, this one is very boring to be honest it's just we kill this guy three times he's gonna be invincible while he's talking uh we just got to wait for him to talk and then we can hurt him so donations we do do you we indeed have donations yeah words words are hard sometimes i have anoraxis here with 25 dollars with no comment thank you so much for that donation going towards the bonus game that is happening at the end of this run if we get there we are let me double check $78 away. Come on, Twitch chat. We can get that done before the one hour mark. Let's get it out of the way. Let's go. Let's go towards 6k as well. We're getting ever so closer. We can make that happen during the Halo run, right? We can do that. Surely. I also have Mini Stefan here with $20. This says, hello from the crowd. Thank you so much. Best of luck, Sorex. Hope Gravemind treats you well. <laughs> Ooh, let's see about that. That is a rough one. <laughs> yeah. I have John Halo here with $5 Yo. as well. <laughs> That says John Halo here. Hey Sorix, what do you call a cow with a halo? Uh, a halo? A holy cow. Oh. oh my God, get out! <laughs> Keep the puns coming. I do like them, and I will read all of them. And the audience doesn't get to leave. <laughs> <laughs> so Delta Halo coming up here. This is probably a lot of people's favorite uh, casual mission. Yep. It's. Uh, it has a lot of in, uh, like like a lot of different things. It has like vehicle sections. It's quite like grand and and just a lot to explore and big. And it just has like a bit of everything. Uh, we're not gonna be seeing too much of it though, to be honest. So we're gonna hit the trigger here. We could go continue and just continue walking forwards there around the corner. But I'm gonna opt to go back instead and just go out of bounds after hitting that trigger. Um, you just have to hit that trigger to progress the mission uh, for the script to, to work. But yeah, once we hit it, we can just go back and dodge all the sniper jackals that were around that corner. So that's nice. As a casual, I can confirm this is the best mission in the game. <laughs> this is probably a good moment to say I don't actually speedrun this game, but... You played it. You, I've played it a few times, yeah. Uh, 
I've done qualifying. lasso. Yeah. Qualifying. Yeah. Oh, lasso game. I've done lasso. Yeah. Yeah. Painfully, but still. Yeah. I'm sure some people saw. Um, Karen mentioned the Moist Critical Challenge for uh, Exodus. There was like one kind of recently for uh, Lasso on this game as well, beating Deathless, which is like, it's like legendary, but like one step up, where it's just you step up. It's step just up. yeah, it's just ridiculous. Uh, cool little ghost launch, by the way, throwing a nade. So nice. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 like a, such a good trick because it's like really cool looking and just super consistent and nice. Um, yeah, just you can. See what happened there, just threw a nade, drove the ghost over and launched across the gap. Skips uh, opening a bridge there. But yeah, the Moist Critical Challenge. Put a lot of uh, eyes on this game. Uh, not quite speedrunning uh, speed wise, but it's still like a challenge run, deathless. It's uh, still had a lot of speedrunning uh, elements to it. Yeah, got a lot of eyes on the game. It's a really cool, uh, cool time for sure. And Jerv, the, the person who uh, who got beat the challenge in the end, first one to do it, was actually used to be a speedrunner for uh, this game. Uh, actually, back before they patched in Swordflies, he's pretty OG when it comes to Halo 2 Anniversary. So we hit another trigger there, and we're just going back out of bounds. We're just, we just don't want to see any of this level, apparently. It just driving the ghost out of bounds here, hitting all the triggers we need, and then just going, dripping right back out. Uh, the level's just so open, uh, it just allows us to do this. This one's a little tricky. Have to land here without falling in. Dip in, load the level, hit the trigger, all right, and we're back out. There's a bunch of sniper jackals in that forest as well. Uh, came out of, so that kind of sketchy if you fall in. Nice flip. <laughs> Gonna take a bit of a stop here to prepare for the next level because we actually carry over our weapons and grenades to the next level. So just preparing, picking up some stuff that's gonna gonna help out. Making sure to grab the sword there. That's also very important to have for the next level. It's a pretty decent little title. Time to regret. Yeah, yeah. You Re know who's regretting is submitting a bonus run. <laughs> e Benny in the audience because it got met. Let's go. <laughs> we are getting amnesia of the bunker after this run. Thanks everyone for donating towards it. And that was by a no comment $250 donation Yo. from Dr. Phineas, who also like elevated the Crash Bandicoot like bit war. It was all Team Cortex, but I am now full on Team Bandicoot because it just flew into the lead. Thank you so much for that donation. I'm... This section is very scary because there's like no checkpoints and there's so many sniper jackals. You see me crouching there uh, over these barricades can help. There's one more. Hopefully he start off with this nade. Oh. I really want a checkpoint here as well. E. Try this. You can see how careful Sorix is being around the sniper jackals because he will get killed immediately. Yeah. So, I, okay, okay. I was a bit worried there because we hadn't gotten a checkpoint at all. Um, was where you might have a checkpoint glitch, where basically something that happens sometimes where the game uh, thinks you're in combat constantly and it just doesn't give you checkpoints for the rest of the mission. That would have been a restart for sure. I, I'm not doing that. Uh, but yeah, we got a checkpoint on the gondola, so it should be all right. We just gotta wait for this gondola. Uh, I f kind of forgot to mention the huge skip we just did, yeah. where we uh, cancelled over the th to this gondola uh, early. This, this one's basically supposed to like fly away when you uh, get onto that uh, platform that we were on. But because we came up from the other side, we were able to like be close to it as it came on and then do a sword cancel quickly off those enemies onto it and just catch it as it drives away. Yeah, spawn killing those enemies there and that should reverse the gondola here. Sorry, were you trying to kill something? Just keep us moving along here. 
I was just about to say, I remember this level being very differently. We all, we have all missed <laughs> yeah. that bus. You know, yeah. I think the foreigners built these new structures around the old. The lining up a redirect sword by here. I'm, I'm like lining myself up in this corner, and hopefully I'm gonna bump into this as I sword fly off one of these jackals. They're not quite in range yet, so I have to wait a second. Uh, but hopefully that redirects me slightly to the left. There. That's those jackals right there. Looks good. Nice. Nice. Perfect. Very good. Waited just a second to kill those jackals because if you don't, you get extra spawns for whatever reason. Don't ask me why. Button G. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They, ju they just love giving you extra spawns for like no reason. Looks like we're going down. Unless you'd prefer to swim. Oh. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Gonna try to walk out as his closest. Nice. It's all right. Don't worry about it. All right. <laughs> Game just teleports you back in uh, if you get out. So you can uh, use that opportunity to grab some nades while we wait. And yeah, this uh, this level has like quite a lot of these just elevators and gondolas you're waiting on. So perfect time for doing. I have a donation from you, 2D SVD here with $25. It says, feels good to be back and I couldn't agree more. In fact, it feels like I never left. Also, couldn't agree more. <laughs> My eternal gratitude to everyone involved making ESA the highlight of the year for me. Volunteers, runners, live audience, and of course, the one and only Twitch chat too. You're all cute. <laughs> Less than free. Thank you so much for making that happen. And we have officially passed the $6,000 mark here during this Halo run. Thank you everyone for donating. Keep those donations coming. We are going to be here all week. Your donations can you win you prizes. You can get bonus runs on the schedule like Amnesia Bunker is going to be after this. We're going to be here for a while. So sit tight everyone and keep hydrating. All right, so we're out into this underwater section, which is, I think this is like one of the coolest sections of the game. It's like really unique. Just the atmosphere and the music and everything. This is a pretty short one. Grabbing this, oh, there we go. Grabbing this beam rifle through the ceiling there. And I don't know what that hunter's doing. He's like, he's a bit lost, I think. Guys are already alerted, that's a bit sketchy. Okay. And one more sword guy. And we'll get a refresh on the sword there as well. Oh yeah, swords have ammo in this game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they they do in campaign. They don't in multiplayer. Oh yeah. Which is kind of interesting. So the that's they're like insanely over overpowered in multiplayer. To be honest, <laughs> it's uh actually used to. You can actually play this game on the original uh, Xbox 360. There's like third-party services to play the original patch online, yeah. so you can like do sword fly duels. It's like really fun, just like sword flying at each other in multiplayer on lockdown. The carrier just received a response from High Charity, a very well encrypted message from the Prophet of Truth. Yeah, it's super broken, but it's super Listen fun. To this. Yeah, yeah. Your haste has Sometimes these fish, the if you get lucky, covenant. you they glitch out and they go through. Oh! Public display of our contempt. Fish. Thanks only to Joel? Mercy and his wife. Joel. <laughs> Truth, mercy. There you go. We got a fish. Three prophet hierarchs. Killing regret yeah. to shake up the covenant leadership. But frankly, it's it getting like some exposition here. Some lore. Talking about the prophets, basically the the leaders of the covenant. Uh, the aliens. And we're going up again. that sword cancel quickly and they don't alert and here's one called mountain cancel oh that spawn mm -hmm. is sketchy he's too far away okay yeah no. that's a revert yep 
the, a little dependent on the spawn you get here. Maybe we can get it the second time. Otherwise, we might just have to walk around. Whatever. Spawn looks better. Ooh, it's a bit too far left, but it's it's all right, all right. That's good enough. So not only does that go over the mountain, go a little straighter, a little faster. Also skip some uh, going past the uh, sniper jackal. Potentially. So that's always that's always positive. How's it going, you two? It's checkpoint, and we're on a lot of gondola. Who could have guessed it? Another old scroller. Yeah. I'm as close to the <laughs> <laughs> Gonna be some uh, some banshees coming here. Uh, there's some fighting to be done, so it's not a full auto scroller. Right. This mission, I think, technically, there's there's a more infamous auto scroller coming up later. Uh, oh yeah. This uh, like a very long gondola. Please donate. Right. <laughs> Give us content. <laughs> I don't like what this Banshee's doing. He's gonna come back to bite me for sure. I have to look out for that. Oh, there he comes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. That makes this a lot more complicated, but that grunt is gonna do some of my work for me. Should be everything. Now, where is this Banshee? Oh, he's still really far back. You know, maybe, maybe. Okay, never mind. I was gonna say maybe he wants to be friendly. But... <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There we go. Nice. So, almost on to the last section here. This is going to be quite an intense section. There's another boss fight. This is by far the scariest boss fight. It's also the worst boss fight. Uh, casually. Yeah, casually maybe. I think it's pretty interesting in the speedrun. Uh, at least on Legendary, on Easy. It's quite boring. But, it's also very easy. So we're into the fight now. Oh, never mind. Ooh. Just can't call it too early. Surely this time. All right, there we go. So using nade boards here because he's basically he's on a vehicle. This is a prophet we're fighting here, and so you can board it and you can nade board to uh, speed it up. And I'm making whenever I'm sword flying to him, I'm pretty much always gonna be. Mid-air stopping, uh, which I mentioned earlier, sometimes it's it's good, most of the time it's bad. But for this, we don't really want to go past him, we want to stop on him. Okay, so turning the camera can force a mid-air stop. Oh, that's a dual guy. I might be dead here. Uh. Nice. Oh, it's not over. Okay. Boss <laughs> jump. Definitely gonna take a second to regen shields here. I'm also just going up top a lot. Uh, in There's another plasma rifle oh, guy. <laughs> okay, we got a checkpoint, so all good. Yeah, the spawns here are actually random. You go. What? There's the target. Take him out. So it's random whether you get sword guys, plasma rifle guys, or dual plasma rifle guys. We basically just just want sword guys because we can dodge them pretty easily. It's the it's the shooty guys you need to worry about, especially the duelist ones. I think it's just one more board, if I've been uh, counting correctly. I think so. Oh, that's a nice spawn. I'll take it. Nice. And yep, that's the fight. And once he's dead, enemies don't care about you anymore. The phantoms are turning around. The They're friendly. Fire on our position. We need to get out of here. <laughs> and we're on to sacred icon here. Uh, this we're back to the arbiter levels now. Um, this one's kind of interesting. Some people hate this mission. Some people really like this mission. 
I like this mission. I, won't, I don't know if I'd really like it. This is a good one. It's a kind of a, a special arbiter level because we, you don't get a sword until the very end. So there's not much sword uh, movements at the start. And there's kind of a complicated fight at the end. Uh, just, you know, some people like their combats. Some people prefer more mo movement focused stuff. Still some interesting stuff we can do, like uh, nade boost like that, off that. I think that's a, like a sentinel spawner, which gives you like extra, extra momentum. Yeah, a lot of a lot of walking and sort of nade boosts and gonna be using the camo a lot to sneak past enemies. Insane nade boost right there. I'm pretty sure that saved like at least half a frame. Always important. These pistons that I'm shooting to open are kind of interesting. There's like very little explanations for how they work. On lower difficulties, you can just like stand and and like press X or press activate on them. But on higher difficulties, for whatever reason, Bungie decided no, you have to shoot them. You, you you're not allowed to just activate them. This is this is legendary, all right. This is real stuff. You have to shoot them. Um, <laughs> and there's like very little explanation for how that works. So if you if you just play lower difficulties and then you switch a legendary, you'll be like very confused as to how to actually progress in this mission. And the game doesn't tell you, by the way. Yeah, there's there's like a tiny hint because if you if you spend a lot of time in the first room, I think there's like a grunt that comes up and shoots it. Oh. So there's like a tiny hint, but it's very easy to miss. Oh yeah, another gondola. So yeah. have time for uh, who would have guessed? Maybe a, a one donation here. I indeed have one donation for you. I have some Halo lore from Private Jenkins. <laughs> All right, let's hear <laughs> it. Five dollars says, "Dear Sarge, curing Alzheimer's and Malmu. Wish you were here." Thank you so much for that donation, and I I do love Sarge. I want some I want some Sarge love in chat and in donations as well. There's some killer lines that he has. Yeah, a lot of people go crazy about the Halo lore. I'm I'm ashamed to admit I'm I'm not the the biggest lore expert. But the cutscenes uh, in this game, some of them go crazy. So, oh, that's bad. Might be dead here. Okay. You're fine. Are you? You, you sure? Mm. <laughs> yeah, broke our camo there prematurely. Uh, if you get shot at all in camo, it just completely breaks it. So when you camera, you really have to be, be sure that no enemies have seen you. Then, so they don't shoot you as it's activating. That's what happened there. This is kind of uh, an infamous section. This is carrier hallway. I really hope I get a checkpoint here because this can be sketchy. Looks like we're not getting one. Actually, don't know if I have a checkpoint at all. Uh, this could be sketchy. All right, that went pretty much perfectly. Yeah. Uh, did a shotgun boost there, so I haven't really mentioned it yet because uh, you don't really do them much on legendary uh, at all. But there's you can not only do sword cancels, but you can do melee cancels as well. It's the same thing as a sword launch, but you just use a melee launch, which is way weaker and way shorter range, so it's not nearly as, as useful. But in some cases, it can be helpful. Like here, when we don't have a sword, and we need to get past those carriers quickly. Basically, you did a cancel, and then you shot the shotgun uh, to kill the carrier, so he didn't block me after the cancel. It looks really, really different, but it's basically just a sword cancel, and then shooting, but without a sword. So we're almost out of the the walking section here. Actually, coming coming up on some tubes, uh, we like to call them, where you like drop down these chutes. And this is actually an interestingly, this is another place where the game makes you invincible. We can't like abuse it like we did on Oracle. Uh, oh, uh, but you are actually invincible in these tubes, and it's it's really funny because uh, some of you might know there's uh, this thing called the scarab gun in the game. Uh, on Metropolis, it's like an easter egg where you can shoot 
you can basically hold like a, a, a gun that shoots the, the Scarab Ray, which is like insanely powerful. And on Master Chief Collection, on Anniversary, uh, there's a skull that gives you that that Easter egg gun everywhere. And if you use it on this mission, you can you can literally just like propel yourself down the tubes by just shooting it upwards and just like boosting yourself down because you're just invincible anyway. <laughs> it's like insanely fast. It's like the funniest strat. It's actually quite a lot of technique to, to go down these tubes, but I didn't show this very well. Um, all right, I'll, I'll go for the revert. We're hoping for a good spawn here. And I'll, okay, I'll, I'll take my chances again. All right, uh, well, we're, we'll just take this then. Sometimes when you revert uh, the spawn switch... This is gonna be sketch. Three sixty for good luck. Yep. No. no. Also, Sorix is sword lunging without an actual crosser, which makes it ever so slightly harder. Yeah, you just have to like know how close you can be. He's played this game before. He knows. So we have to kill a five plot here. Uh, this is. There we go. This is gonna start this wave fight. Uh, this is a pretty long fight uh, of six waves in total. The waves are always the same, but you get them in a different order every time. Uh, oh. All right. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, we got the spawn. Nice. It was worth it. <laughs> it was calculated. And I might be dead. Okay, almost. I am. Sure, surely surely we get, get it again. Oh. oh. Yeah, this section can be really rough. Once once you get into the fight and you get like situated, usually alright, but just getting in there and uh Oh my god. Yeah, that's a shotgun. This is some incredible RNG you're getting. Yeah, this yeah. this is we ha we haven't been getting uh Halo 2 enough this run so far. That's that's yeah. It is a frame perfect trick, so you're gonna fail it every now and then. There we go. Nice. Ah, I'm... so they they keep breaking my camera here, which is really unfortunate. Just need to get in there. I, I might try going off this guy instead. Better. Usually, uh, just reverting to get the good spawn works, but it seems to have like a really weird uh, RNG seed here. So just had to figure it out. Hopefully, all right. There's a checkpoint. Nice. Run two into the fight. We got a different wave this time, so you can kind of tell which waves you get from the audio. So I'm gonna be trying to listen to that. And I'm probably just gonna be trying to focus here. Wave. Yeah, this flood love to get stuck. Um, <laughs> It's actually a little bit broken on the anniversary version of the game because the physics are slightly different. The the way they're supposed to like climb out the holes it doesn't really work properly. So a lot of time they end up uh, suiciding and a lot of times they end up in like sketchy spots like glitch out. Like, you can see them jumping out. Oh my god. You can see them like jumping out. That's not really supposed to happen. Bit of a rough sacred icon here, but happens sometimes. You said you liked it. So. Ah, I d yeah. <laughs> still it's, like it. It's, uh, it's, it's trying. It's trying to change my mind. I know, right? So one of the things that's making this difficulty difficult here is I have 
no allies. Uh, usually you would get some reinforcements um, that would help soak up the damage from the flood, but we have none. So that's making this. And there's one stuck in the hole here. The laying spawns. Should be another one stuck somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where though. Oh, there he is. <laughs> Nading these carriers as they like fall down like that, you can skip getting any popcorn uh, or infection forms, I should say. I like to call them popcorn flood. <laughs> they pop like popcorn. Good like the popcorn flood. Yeah. Also very funny that the infection forms just kind of trip when you walk up to them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they just pop on your shields. I think it's like the blue. I, where are my my allies actually? I don't even. But see. you had allies earlier, right? Yeah, yeah. Usually you get like green. I I see him on the radar. I see half. I think that's half draw at least. It must be. Is he out of bounds? I think so. Yeah. Sometimes uh, the infection forms get on him and just eat him over and over. And uh, when that happens, you get like a slight push upwards. When the popcorn uh, flood get on you, and when when they're on half jaw, half jaw's just invincible. He's an invincible NPC, so he just like flies up into the stratosphere endlessly, as the popcorn eat him over and over. So that might be what happened. Yeah. And he might have just launched up there. All right, there we go. Nice. And the quarantine zone. This is gonna be very intense for the first little bit, and then we're gonna have a uh, big auto score. Big surprise, I guess. So, big driving level, so I'm gonna just switch into mouse and keyboard here. That f actually, this is actually one of my favorite uh, ILs to do. Just because it's basically like all action all the time and just really fun to optimize this driving. The, the record for this level is also just insane. Record for most levels are insane. Yeah. There's actually a pelican flying up in the sky right now with a tank, carrying a tank that's shooting out of it, like, and it's shooting like a like a machine gun, like it's shooting like insanely fast. So you can actually you can you can like see it up in the in the top left there. Kind of uh, unhinged by Bungie. Yeah, a little bit. Going over this mountain. Saves a tiny bit going around, like a second or two. Not huge. Uh, here you're supposed to get out on foot, but you can just squeeze the ghost in there. You do have to be careful though in this indoor section because Bungie didn't expect you to be on the ghost, so all the triggers uh, that are like mandatory to hit only check once a second. Means that uh, meaning that you can skip them if you go too fast, or if you just kind of hit them at the right time, yeah, or at the wrong time rather. But. And camo works in the ghost in vehicles, by the way. So yep, there's definitely just nothing driving this ghost <laughs> yeah. right now. I see no issues with that. Oh, I forgot. Get sketchy. You're fine. Oh, I do. I just. I was just waiting for the rocket to come around the corner, as as you said. The. I mean, so far I've kind of jinxed all of them every time I've said it, but you know. Yeah, it's pretty good QZ. This this level can really like, Halo to you. It's kind of like you can <laughs> get you can get really screwed here. Actually, it's not over. I shouldn't say anything. You could get insanely unlucky here. Okay, no, we're good. Obviously, he's not supposed to have the the ghost here. Yeah, I mean, this open area, I think you're supposed to get another vehicle, but... And what do you know? Auto scrollers. Ooh, I'll take purple. So th there's this weird spot here on Anniversary, 
I just, I think it, there's like the shaders are like glitched with the glass or something. You can just like get random colors. Uh, looks like we can't get purple anymore, but I uh, did. Yeah, cyan, it's pretty good. You, you got like different colors every time. People kind of like obsess over it. <laughs> it's kind of cool though. I should get a needler as well. Uh, actually. But yeah, we're on a big auto scholar here. This is like five minutes total, so longest one in the game. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna be waiting up top here, safe from the enemies out of bounds. And uh, yeah, perfect time for some donations. Oh no, an auto scroller! How terrible! <laughs> oh my! <laughs> and that means that I can read some donations. I have minus muscle fan with five dollars. It says I love Halo Two more than Pikmin Four. Also, how do you make the comparison? Like. Where did that come from? I don't know. <laughs> I'm just reading comments here. <laughs> also, good luck on your run, sorry. So thank, thank you. you so much for that five dollar donation. I like. I need more information about that comparison. Like how? <laughs> I have medials here as well with another five dollars. It says arbiter noises. <laughs> thank you so much for that donation as well. <laughs> you gotta work harder for that. I see you in the audience. <laughs> wart wart. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank I'll, you. You're I, welcome, rather. Yeah, you're helping out. Yeah. I uh, I have $50 as well from Gelk Jr. that says, Hey, Sorix, this is a nice run you have here. You should also go for a run during the QZ gondola. Ooh, I could have done that. But could've it's a bit that. too late now. Oh, no, there's another auto-scroller here where you're safe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if you donate for that now, like, may maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Could maybe a fifty dollar donation? Yeah, twenty, twenty. I'll go for a run on the. You gotta, you gotta be really fast. Though. Yeah. <laughs> shout out to Galk, by the way. Uh, Halo Three speedrunner. Yeah. Shout out to all the Halo speedrunners that are showing up in force here during this run. It's always amazing to see the Halo crowd just come up and just like be be so supportive of it. It's always great to see. I'm having a wonderful time here on my shift. This is these have been some amazing runs here. Also. That donation is going towards the Zelda cosplay that we have coming up. So in about two hours from now, we have a Wind Waker cosplay happening. But only if we can actually have make it happen before that run actually starts. So we need another $600 to get that happen. So we have a bonus run and after that two more runs and then we have that. So if you want to make that incentive happen, Keep on donating, put them towards incentives that are coming up, put them towards bit wars, put them towards anything, but click those buttons, get them towards incentives, and keep on donating, everyone. Thank you so much for this amazing support during this Halo run. You guys are all amazing. Still okay. auto-scrolling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's still going for a while. On this upward section, you can like, you just saw it like there. This is a bit sketchy that I'm doing this, but you can like bounce like this as it's going up. I'm a bit scared right now because you can die doing this. I, okay, okay, it stopped. <laughs> uh, and I'm pretty sure the checkpoint was like three minutes back or something. So yeah, <laughs> that could have been bad. Yeah, it's a little funny. Got about two minutes left of auto scrolling. Yeah, a little bit, roughly. Yeah, this this area, you, it's hard to tell from the scale, but this area is like actually huge. Um, this gondola is like, it, it's been we've been on it for like five minutes, but it's actually moving quite fast. The the scale of the area is just massive, which is like one of the cool things about Halo Two is just the scale of it. Like a lot of it's like a lot of it's real. Like a lot of it's not just skybox. Like. On Delta Halo, you can see like big mountains in the distance, and you can literally just pop out of bounds, get in a ghost, and just drive up that mountain. And it might take you like 10 15 minutes to get up there, but you can do it. So we're coming up on the end here. Uh, hopefully, gonna try like a little sword fly. End of the, the level is like over there. So th these guys kind of line up perfectly just by default. For a sword fly, it can actually die doing this. Can be a bit sketchy. That should be fine. Nice. That's actually quite a good one, yeah. yeah. And uh, coming into Grave Mine. So, as previously mentioned, hardest level in the game, for sure, on Legendary. Um, 
for speed running and casually, I'd say. So level sucks. Yeah, terrible. I'm quite. You can you can literally just get beamed like the instant you spawn there within like half a second. I'm kind of surprised that didn't happen. Uh, but yeah, the game just basically spawns us in in a room filled with enemies. That I for you us. immediately. Yeah. The demon has infiltrated the council chamber. But there's a few the cool tricks also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, there's a so. supposed to be a wave fight here. If you stand in like a specific spot, honestly, I don't know exactly how this works. Uh, from what I've heard, is like if you stand in a specific spot, uh, the game like doesn't recognize you as being there, uh, and just doesn't spawn the waves. <laughs> Something like that. I'm sorry if I butchered the explanation. But if you stand there uh, long enough, the waves don't spawn, and hopefully... There you go. Watch out for the it's got a brute That's the wave we want. Okay, making use of the dual needlers here. I'm actually tapping the triggers as I'm shooting here. Makes it shoot a little bit faster. That should be... Alright, that's perfect. And now we should be getting some more waves up top. Random which force they can come out of, so... Sort of trying to be aware of them all. That's really good RNG, actually. Yeah, for once. Yeah. One more grunt. I'm delaying killing him so I can get back in the spot. And skip two more waves, hopefully. And that was, like, an insane first room. That was really good. Getting... Put me down on yep, the there you go. There That's the first room. I think that might be a sub, too. It's gonna be close. That's really good. It's like what you're looking for in IELTS. That prophet, truth. He has the index. You've got to take it from him. Sub Let two. Let me get these doors. Pause jump. Yep. One fifty-eight. Nice. So technically, you can like you don't have to kill these enemies, but there's just so many. There's no way you're getting through here without camo, uh, which we don't have. On a, this is like um, actually like a major difference between Anniversary and the original version of the game is in Legendary Speedruns of the original, you'd actually have camo here, even as Master Chief, because you can, you can pick up skulls and they activate as you pick up, whereas in H2 Anniversary, the skulls don't activate you when you pick up, you have to activate them in the menu, uh, which we don't allow for speedruns. Uh, it's kind of like a game modifier. There's a lot of like wacky skulls, so. Oh, yeah. But yeah, in Halo 2 Anniversary, you'd actually have camo here because of that skull pickup. Uh, which makes the level. In a way, it makes it safer, but it also means you can just play it more risky. So. It's kind of like as safe as you want it to be, I suppose. Waiting for these jackals to go past. You can see I'm on the motion sensor in the bottom left. Go. Depending on the spawns here. Oh, this. No, okay, it's bottom me. Depending on the spawns here, you can actually just run through this room sometimes. Like, stealth through it. Uh, we're gonna have to. Come over here? Okay. So, if you get lucky, you can actually skip this wave of enemies. Get some extra ammo. Be safe. And we're coming up on uh, prison skip here. Very like a run killer esque trick here. First, we have to clear out this corridor just for a checkpoint. Oh, oh my God! Okay, nice. Not even close. <laughs> okay, we got a checkpoint. So, the, uh, there's a uh, lift here leading down to a, a prison full of marines that we're supposed to save. Jump in. Uh, but when you go halfway down the lift, you trigger... Oh, why is it working? You trigger a load, and that load is all you need to, pro to progress the game. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, have, we're relying on the enemies to, uh, to basically do what we want here, which is... <laughs> Never a good recipe for like a consistent food. But that load is all we need, so if we can hit that load and then somehow go back up the lift, we can skip the entire section. 
Nice. And, okay. We should be okay. So you can get shot going down the left. But now we have this guy on top of me, and I'm gonna, right as I hit the load, repeatedly melee and cancel it. And go back up. And there we go. That's pretty skip. That's not too bad. That's not, not too bad. That is actually pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. That is like a major run killer. That's like a huge time saver as well. It takes like at easily two minutes, I think, to clear the prison. So. But hey, the more of this level that we skip, the better. Yeah. yeah. We actually went through like a trigger. We were talking about trigger cycles earlier on QZ where you can go through them too fast. That's actually what happened here. And we, it's kind of like good because we don't have enemies here. But also, I'm hoping we get a checkpoint. No? OK. Yeah. Oof. This is like, you have prison skip and then you have this section right after it, which is just really brutal sometimes. Um, you basically have to hit this fly off of a sniper jackal and just hope he doesn't shoot you. It's, he's uh, supposed to be aggroed on a hunter, which is what we're hoping. We're hoping to fly past before he snipes the hunter. But if he can get a checkpoint, that's really good. It's just a little inconsistent with the checkpoints in this game. Not getting one there. Hit it. Okay. Nice. nice. That's like, I would say, prison skip and then into that section. That's sort of the crux of this mission. Um, after this, it's there's still a lot that can go wrong, but that's definitely the worst bits over with. Just gonna walk here. You can actually do a fly here, but need to be like really fast for the enemies to be in the right spot and I kind of messed up the jump a little bit so just kind of take it nice and slow we're not gonna have a checkpoint for a long time here so don't die yeah coming up is a section we like to call hell room <laughs> so we'll see how hell room goes Basically, a ton of enemies, but we can cancel through and... Okay, they didn't aggro on us. Okay, that's good. That room used to be way worse um, before we figured out how to do that sword cancel. It, you do it in like a very particular way. I'm gonna try a thing here. Oh, kind of. You can... Uh, so these... Uh, it says, originally people thought you can only do this on the original version of the game. You basically crouch as you're going through these lifts and uh, in a, like a very particular way and you like go downward slowly and you can like skip carry some momentum out of them and i've crouched about the scroll wheel so i'm like slowly scrolling and crouching super quickly as i'm ex exiting them and you can carry momentum out like that you can actually do it without scroll wheel but it's like insanely difficult killing these guys for safe Cooperate. All right. So we should get a checkpoint now that we kill those guys. Trying to delay it a little bit here by jumping. Okay. Game in combat. We're in the air. Another redirect fly. Sniper jackal's not looking at us. Good. Kill the guy just to be safe. Checkpoint, nice. This has gone pretty smoothly. Coming up on the last sword by here. Kill the sniper jackal on the side. Look on the bright side. For now, they seem much more interested in killing each other. Hopefully get a checkpoint before this final room. Come on. All right, there it is. Nice. So we have to kill these enemies in a particular order. Otherwise, we get uh, reinforcement because Bungie. Yep. John Bungie. 
Obviously, we need to kill the brutes last. Oh, that was a nade, I think. Yeah. Didn't see that one. Alright, there we go. That's basically Grave Mind. Just have one more cancel here. That was a pretty good Grave Mind. Yeah, that was that yeah. was actually not bad at all. In terms of uh, like a no reset setting, oh my god. This is some. As we say that, yeah. That's some interesting spawns right there. This isn't good. I am getting there you go. Reports of flood leaving in basically just waiting for the level to end now. Dialogue. Go oh, sub eleven. Nice. I'll take it. Uprising time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Previously, actually, is it? It, it used to be the shortest level in the game, and then it wasn't. <laughs> and now I think it might be again. <laughs> it's close. <laughs> uh, but yeah. This is sort of a favorite. Uh, for, uh, this is like a speedrunner's favorite, I, I think. Like, a lot of people that are just picking up the game, this is like the first thing, the first level they'll play. Uh, it's because it's like short and sweet. It has a lot of sword uh, sword movement. And it's just simple. So, for picking up the game, this is like perfect. Killing those grunts. They're actually on our side. Uh, I was hoping for nades, but... It's a bit sad. <laughs> yeah. Justifiable. Is chilling, hopefully? Okay. <laughs> Go for sword fly here. Nice. That's basically the level. Well, normally this would only be about maybe a third or halfway through the level. But there's like a big skip right at the end. Here. We're about to do in a second. We're gonna... That's a really nice cancel. Nice, yeah. We're gonna uh, jump off this tree here and go out of bounds. Get some banger music. Yep. And go to seemingly pretty random looking spot here. So basically when Bungie placed the end level trigger for this mission, uh, they just made it super high for no reason. They just made it extend like way into the sky. So we're like, you can see down there where the end of the mission is. And we're, we just hit it from up on the mountain. High charity time. Yeah, this is the level that overtook Uprising as the shortest level when we found uh, Pretty much the biggest skip in the game here. It's also very ridiculous looking. Yeah. This is high charity skip. Gonna be taking this flood, uh, getting him over to the edge. Normally you're meant to like go over there, go inside. We're not gonna be doing any of that. We're just gonna be taking this flood. And we're applying the same concept as I, I did earlier in prison skip, but in a much larger scale, basically. Um, getting him to the edge here. And start using him to fly. Yeah. So Sorex is kind of gliding backwards and just knows where to go. To skip a yeah. lot of uh, of the mission here. Yeah, basically going from the start of the mission to the end. So the end isn't actually loaded like where the end of the mission is. Uh, but the trigger still is. So it's just like a trigger floating in void space that we're heading over to right now. And it's probably hard to see what's going on. Um, but I've done this a lot, so I know where we're going. I'm actually dropping down quite a lot, quite a lot here. And I'm gonna switch to new graphics here. That's actually the first time I'm gonna see them. Oh. We're getting some lag. Oh, I, nice. I thought it actually crashed. Yeah, same. Okay. Yeah, so the anniversary bit of uh, this game is uh, like a remastered version that kind of runs parallel. 
to the old version, so you can just walk between them. And yeah. Get new graphics if you if you want to. I think we're a bit low here. We got too low. There's actually a death barrier as opposed to the end level trigger. There we go. Nice. Yeah, so that trick looks ridiculous, and it is ridicu ridiculous. Um, but in in like in essence, it's just getting under the enemy, doing a, a melee, canceling that melee, but you still get the momentum. So you go upwards a little bit, and you can also control that and go to the side. Uh, and you just repeat that over and over. Um, since the enemy just sticks on top of your head, you can just fly like that. It's... Definitely the most ridiculous trick in the Halo franchise. Uh, it's probably the most ridiculous uh, trick in any speedrun I've done. But yeah, we're up on the last mission there. I did something really important with that Spectre. Uh, killed the Elite so he doesn't get back in the Spectre and drive it away. And I placed it, I parked it in a specific spot because we really need that Spectre for later. And not just any Spectre, that Spectre in particular. Because it has like a, a specific flag set to it. That makes uh, an ally the allies that get in the specter have like a um, get like a flag to them that makes them uh, drive towards the arbiter, uh, and that's used in the beginning of the level to make the elite drive towards you. But that uh, has this, like a side effect that you'll see later that we're gonna make use of. So we really need that specific, specific specter, and it can blow up like from the brutes. Uh, as you're driving away from there. I didn't hear an explosion, so it should probably be alright, but if it's blown up, the, it, there's gonna be some trouble. But that usually doesn't happen, so fingers crossed. Oh. Speaking of things that usually doesn't happen, I don't know what these brutes Has are doing. Has never happened. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does happen on occasion, I won't oh, yeah. lie, but... <laughs> that's, no, no, no. that's some Halo 2 right there. There we go, that's where this is supposed nice. to be. That was pretty good. Yeah. A lot of people, uh, when they're talking about this level on Legendary, it's like, that sword fly is like the whole level. Because most, most of the level is like pretty consistent. Um, and you, the, the sort of like the scariest part of it is just doing that sword fly. Because usually your checkpoint is like really far back. So you just have to hit that sword fly like first or second try. And, you know, it is a frame-perfect trick, so it's very easy to choke, especially when you're nervous. Wow. It, they broke my camera there by... by sh that's... Sh pretty unlucky. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought he didn't die. You have to kill three enemies for this door to open. I do that in a particular way, just getting two back smacks and... Eight kill. There we go, one more clear, and that's end of the game. Johnson is actually driving the Scarab. Finally some Johnson. Yeah, we're actually switched sides now, so we're the Arbiter. But we're teaming up with the uh, humans to take down Tartarus. Yeah, it is pretty tunnel. confusing if you don't know the lore. Yeah. Because uh, your enemies become your friends and vice versa. Yeah. But this section is kind of like... Uh, uh, disguised as an auto or like a disguised auto scroller. We're gonna be making our way over to the Spectre, which hopefully is still there. Uh, fingers crossed. Right behind this rock, surely it's there. Yes, sir. All right. Nice. Uh, so getting in here, and we're gonna be driving it to a pretty specific location. We have a lot of time here. Um, we're like on a clock, but it's very generous. Because the Scarab is like walking uh, over like to where we are right now. And it's going to be shooting that door uh, to open it. And uh, yeah, get us into the last boss fight of the game. We're going to be driving this Spectre up. Because like I said, this Spectre is really important. We're going to be driving up into a specific spot. Because once Johnson sh uh, shoots the... Uh, a final door there and spawns the trigger to get inside the last cutscene. 
We're gonna be sitting right next to it with the Spectre, hopefully. And gonna be dropping into it at the same time as the Spectre. And if we do that correctly, the Spectre is actually gonna follow us into the last area. So we're gonna be able to have it in the, in the final fight. You can do that with other vehicles as well. Um, you can do it with a Banshee. If you use a Banshee, you can make the, the fight really, like, really easy. It, it's very slow doing the fight with a Banshee, but it's, like, really hard to die. Basically invincible. But the Spectre is the fastest because you can use that flag I mentioned earlier with with the Johnson who's going to be in the fight with us. Because Johnson some, becomes very important. Yeah, yeah. Some funky stuff. I can also be pretty fast with these final donations during the run. Yeah, yeah, we Good. definitely have some time, so go ahead. Let's go. I have Baron193 with $20 with no comment that has found one of the other incentives that we have. That is the Castlevania Any% percent upgrade to whip only. Uh, and we have username Niels with $35 who is also donating towards the whip only one. But he does have a comment about the Zelda cosplay incentive that's coming up in a few hours. I don't think I want to see him in a Zelda cosplay. Can I bid against it? Please have mercy on our eyes. <laughs> For those that don't know, we have the link to the cosplay, like, on the incentive page. I've seen it. I'll say two things. Giant Clam is gonna be both chilly, and I certainly hope he wears shorts. Because it is a thing. So you want to donate to actually see that happen. I have also X Tunzaka here with $20 that says, I love Halo speedruns. Sorks is such a talented runner, and I agree. Like, we've had 90 minutes of an amazing showcase here. Can I get a round of applause for him? Thank you so much. Thank you. Rest of the comments, not just the Halo games. I love ESA, and I hope everyone enjoys the event. We certainly are, and that is going towards Team Bandicoot Bitwar that's coming up as well in the run after the bonus run that we're going to have. And I see E. Benny ready for it. He's ready to go. So, wrap it up, Sorks. Take us home. Yep. Johnson just shooting the door here, so the perfect timing. We're gonna be dropping the Spectre in here. Using a lineup. So hopefully works. I've had the Spectre like blow up recently on dropping into the cutscene, so hopefully that doesn't happen. Yep, it's there. Have to kill any allies with a weapon, because otherwise they're gonna get in the Spectre and ruin this setup. So Johnson's gonna get in the Spectre here. Gonna get him in the side seats and stand on top of his spawn. And uh, once once Johnson is in the Spectre and he has this flag set to him, it's gonna it's gonna basically think he's not on the map anymore. So he's like, the game thinks there's no Johnson. So there's gonna be like a softlock check and it's gonna spawn more Johnsons. And because we're on his spawn, it's not it's not just gonna spawn one because now it thinks it's block we're blocking his spawn as well. So it's going to spawn two Johnsons, and we have three. Which is by far the best thing about this run. Yeah, and not only do we have like three more Johnsons, so they're going to be shooting Tartarus and making, uh, taking down his shield so we can actually hurt him. Not only do we have three Johnsons, these additional ones are actually like buffed and shoot way faster than the normal Johnson. Oh, and we have a fourth Johnson as well. Yep, there's a fourth one. He's shooting the floor though, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the normal Johnson is not, is not that good, but the yeah. buffed ones shoot way faster. So yeah, this actually makes this fight quite fast. This can take so long if you don't do this. I'm standing, sitting up top here uh, for safety because you get additional waves of enemies like as this goes along. And he's dead and 10 seconds timer. As long as we don't die, I'll put my head in the box just to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> but that should be the end of the game. There you go. Very nice. Well played. Thank you, thank you. And here your uh, anniversary cutscenes. These are like really good. There's like, I know there's like a video on YouTube that's just all the anniversary cutscenes and has like an insane amount of views. Uh, they're like really well done. The anniversary graphics in general in this game are, uh, are amazing. They're just not really good for the speedrun because it's just harder to tell what's going on. There's a lot of effects and stuff, but yeah, this game is, is really good. Just casually if you want to play it. Uh, Halo 2 Anniversary is really good. MCC is super good value on Steam, so I recommend getting it. And getting into the speedrun if you want as well. So uh, I probably should. Yeah. <laughs> 
So yeah, thank you for having me, ESA. Shout out to Halorons.com, uh, the number one site for all your Halo speedrunning needs. <laughs> Shout out to Eris for uh, keeping me company. Yeah, you're very welcome. And uh, yeah, you thank warm. you. Thank you so much for that amazing show. It's gonna get the last round of applause here for Storks and Eris. That is ama amazing. You guys did great. Thank you for making me relive like a very big portion of my childhood. Halo 2 is an amazing game and I highly recommend playing it casually and speedrunning. We are going to be back after a very quick break because we have a bonus game coming up. We have English Ben with Amnesia the Bunker coming on. And you do soon. not want to miss it. You do not want to miss it. that at all. And you do not want to miss the Dishonored run. It's at 1.30 on Tuesday morning. So you're there. I'll be there. Yes, let's go. <laughs> See you soon, everyone. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Bye-bye.